Hello, everybody. How's it going? You caught me mid-cough. Hope everybody's having a good evening this evening. I'm trying to move this camera a little bit there. I kind of took a wild guess setting it up. Yay, we're all live. Everybody's having a good time. My nail clippers are making a sneak appearance. Hey, BD Swaim. Thank you for the warm welcome. <laughs> Everybody, David Garrett, Snuggles, Tell Me, Grumpy Grunts, all you guys who were, uh, David, all you guys who were in the, the pre-show chat, as I like to call it. It's really annoying with YouTube that they don't allow me in until 10 minutes before it starts, but you guys can get in, I think, like up to half an hour before it starts, but I can't participate, which is really kind of annoying. I can't access my own freaking video, but uh, yeah, here we are. Hey, Evan. Hey, Zach. How's it going? Okay, who's ready to hit the thumbs down? <laughs> we already got 20 ups and one down, so not too bad now that I've challenged you. You're all going to switch yours to downs. Yeah, you're VIPs. I, only I could invent a club that I could not get into early, but that's, uh, that's how everything goes. So get the beer out for tonight. I think it's the same thing I had last week because I have not gone through all of them yet. That's not a bottle opener. That's a screwdriver. This is what I'm looking for. I have too many Weehaw things. I love the Weehaw bottle opener. German Precision Bottle Opener for an American beer. But uh, Dogfish had 90 Minute. I love 90 Minute. It's very good stuff. Was it Groucho Marx that said that, David? I couldn't remember. I, couldn't remember. I thought it was Groucho Marx or... Um, uh, yep, name escapes me now. So, yeah. I thought it was Groucho Marx or some other guy. Anything's a bottle opener if you work hard enough. That is true. I can open lots of... I can open bottles with lots of stuff, but... Woody Allen, yeah. I thought it was Woody Allen or... How did you know that's who I was thinking of? I thought it was Woody Allen or Groucho Marx. I couldn't remember. I was trying to think of Woody Allen's name. All I can think of remember he's accused of doing some bad things. But I love Woody Allen movies. Some of my favorite movies ever. Uh, please show me the hinderer. This one, this is a full track. This is what was in my pocket today because I did man stuff today. Um, I went, got the Christmas tree... Set it all up. I know it's a little early. It's not too early, but uh, my kids are adults now, pretty much. They still live here, but they're pretty much adults, and I don't know what their status is going to be next weekend when we want to do the tree. So we knew we'd be around this weekend, so I went and got it today. Got to use my truck as a truck for only like the third time, and I, I do. it is kind of cool to pull up with a truck. I actually pulled up, and uh, there was some guy struggling with ratchet straps to put his Christmas tree on the roof of his Subaru. And he said, um, uh, he said, oh, making it look easy. And then I had to help him with his ratchet straps because I'm intimately familiar with ratchet straps, unfortunately, from hauling bikes and stuff. And he didn't know how they worked, um, but helped him out. And then uh, at, the kid who helped load this into, load the tree into my truck had a really beat up old XM18 in his pocket. Because I had, my tree was tied to another tree and I, got my knife out faster than him and cut the string to detach them and uh he said oh that's a hinderer i have one and he pulled out a pretty beat up old xm18 it's pretty cool i know you chopped it down with the full track no i actually i went to a place that you can chop down your own tree but i am at heart a city boy so i bought one that was pre-murdered so uh that was good but yeah Got a, and then, and that kid was cool. The kid with the hinder too, when he loaded my truck up, he looked at it and said, this ain't from around here because it's old and it's not rusty. <laughs> so and I said, no, it's from Tennessee. I just got it. Don't feel bad. We're full gears well right now. I don't feel bad, but we haven't had a real tree in a decade. Um, it was, uh, but I did get a, I did get a pretty big one. Thank you very much, Zach. I appreciate it. Yes, the super chat is open and all this stuff. I never remember to say that. Click like, subscribe, all those things. Um, but yeah, it's, it's eight feet tall. It was eight and a half, but I had to chop a little bit off the top, which I knew I would. Not because it's too tall. I have 12 foot ceilings in that room, but um, the uh, just to make the angel sit right on the top, I had to chop a little bit off. So now it's about eight feet tall. Uh, the Christmas tree was... Uh, a third of a hinderer. It was very expensive. I have not bought, like I said, a real Christmas tree in a very long time. And with the food and stuff to keep it going, uh, it was like 85 bucks. 
Gah. It was a, it was a lot. And I, I I bought the food. It was five bucks. John Control says feed it sugar water. So you bring down. That's what my parents always did. But uh, I bought the food. It was five bucks. So last Christmas with the kids at home is worth doing up big. That's what I figure. Planes Crafter. It's um I maybe what maybe they'll I think one of them will probably still be here. I don't know which one, but um next year. But I think at least one of them is gonna be gone. So my son probably is gonna be gone. I think probably by the end of January. He's He's 21, and he's pretty serious with a girl. And um, I think he's getting kind of tired of living here, which I don't blame him. I take no offense at it. So uh, I think he, I think he's probably going to be moving out. My daughter's 18. She'd be going to college. It's Who knows what's been going on with colleges. If you're going to be able to go off to college, I feel really bad for her. She just got uh, – I just got notified by the school, but this is her senior year, and um, we basically – not, I'm not going to go into all the details. Basically, she's not going to have a senior year. So that that really sucks. Um, pretty upset for her for that. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. We got to do what we got to do. But, um, yeah, we were hoping she'd get the last half of her senior year. And ain't looking like she's going to. So it's uh, it's too bad for her. But, yeah, we're going to do Christmas up big. I got her most of the stuff they wanted. But, um BDC202 says, you are better than Metal Complex. Well, th well, well, thank you, but I like MC a lot. He's a good friend of mine, but I will I will make sure to tell him that, that you said that. Uh, Carl Anderson, I don't think I'm going to have a graduation. Are, are you gradu graduation age? Uh, Evan B123 says, that sucks, but it's the nature of the current situation. It is. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to complain and feel bad for her, but I'm not saying that they're wrong. Um, I'm not saying they're wrong. But it, it just sucks for her, you know. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't want her to go back to school right now. But, um, yeah, we were told it was originally just um, remote lear learning only until January. Now they just said it's remote learning only until the end of the third quarter and optional, optional in person for the fourth quarter, possibly. Which makes it sound like no. So she's not going to have all this stuff. Uh, EDC202 says, what's your favorite hinder? Oh, that's like asking my favorite child. Um, the one I carry the most is not in here right now. Where did I put it? Oh, because I just sharpened it and did a video for you guys, so it's probably still out around here. Uh, the one I carry the most is the skinny no-choil slicer, uh, which was a DLT exclusive, and it has a sharp dress knives, my card scale. This is the one I carry the most. I'm not sh quite sure I'd say it's my favorite, though. Um, favorite might be this full track, just because it's kind of rare. <laughs> Whatever. Um, 138 Vicious says, Quiet Carry Waypoints have been in stock for most of the week now. Yes, they have. They have. And I told you guys, I told you they were going to be back, and he ordered a bunch of them. And you guys started to doubt me, and every time I showed it, you still got mad. But they're back, and he ordered a bunch, and they're going to be back for a while. And, uh, yeah, so... Go get one. I'm not saying they're going to be around for like a month, but they're going to... He ordered a bunch. Here's mine. This has been in my pocket a lot this month. I got it back out for a specific reason, and I don't remember. And then I just remembered how much I liked it, and I've been carrying it a ton. And I also have been trying to carry some Knife of the Year contenders uh, just to get reacquainted with them before I pick my Knife of the Year winners. So, um, yeah, this is one of them, and uh, this Malibu is one of them that I've been carrying. The Banter is one of them. I've been carrying a lot of knives like this again, just to, just to reacquaint my brain, you know, when that when that comes out. Uh, just order one day, three hundred bucks. Ouch! They're worth it though. They're very very nice. Uh, Evan says, any experience with rustic gen? Yeah, I, I did a I did a video on that, I believe. Uh, hope I don't regret it, but I'm only watching for the dead man's farewell. So, like, yes, I will be watching Survivor Series after this is over with. I have the network. So what I like to watch WWE pay-per-views on is to start about an hour late. And then when you click the pay-per-view, it says start from the beginning, and you can say yes, and then you can skip past the crap parts. <laughs> so I, I, like, I like watching wrestling that way. Oh, I did it a long time ago, Evan. It's just not, not, not surprising that you missed it. Um, Christian the Sedulo, I don't know what that is. I missed when somebody said that the first time. Uh, 
Anyone have a clue when them beautiful three inch slicer grind hinders me available? I don't know. I don't, um, I did just talk to hinderer this week. I don't remember them mention, mentioning those in upcoming stuff. I can't say what they mentioned to me, but uh, I don't remember that being one of them. Um, are you planning on pre-ordering a Synapse XL? Dustin Kelly asked. Yes, I made sure that I'm going to I'm gonna get one to show you guys, if nothing else. So, um, Real Steel Akuma looks awesome for a budget option. It's pretty cool. It is pretty awesome. I would bring it out, but it's in a box. So I, I, don't, I'm not, I don't have it out. Uh, Naf Sergeant Undertaker's Hot Ones was kind of weird just because I haven't heard him talk much before. Or, plus, he's a neck knife guy. He's a big knife guy, and um, I do have some connections in the wrestling world. I'll never make it happen, but a chats from the truck with the Undertaker would be pretty freaking epic. But it'll never, it'll never happen. But I, I, I have enough. I know enough people that I can at least make sure that he directly gets asked. So we'll see, but um, doesn't mean he's going to do it. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm waiting for Severe's going to pull the trigger. By the way, it's called the Gerber Sedulo. It's only available straight from Gerber gear under their reserve tab. I'll have to check that out. I don't have no idea what that is. Uh, how do you like the banter? I still love it a lot. It's a great knife. I actually carried it yesterday. Um, it's a great little knife. It's not even that little. I mean, people call it little. It's, yeah, it's under three inches, but it's not that little. It's not like a tiny little thing. But uh, I, I really do like the banter a whole lot. Even though a bunch of people just said, oh, all you reviewers only like it because you like Ben. If every reviewer likes it, sometimes stuff's just good. I always think it's kind of funny when... That's one thing I've never understood about the internet. When... When you start reviewing a bunch of stuff and, like, there's a whole bunch of reviews of it and all the reviews are solid and you get people to go, oh, that's just hype. No, maybe it's just nice. Maybe it's just really good, you know? Hey, Dirk Verning, how are you? Or Werning, how are you doing? You did correct me. It is Werning, not Verning. Good to see you. Even though you are part of the, my, my crazy instagram saturday so somebody posted you guys know i like watches too even though i don't have much budget for really cool ones so i have some decent ones but nothing really cool um like i woke up in the morning and there were like two posts in a row of people with knives and omega seamasters which the omega seamaster is my like grail watch i just i want an omega seamaster so bad i like dive watches i'm wearing one now i have a citizen pro master um, I love the, I love the Omega Seamasters so much. There were like three posts in a row, people with knives and Seamasters. And I replied to one of them and said, am I the only person here without an, without a Seamaster? And that, cause they're like even used 2,500 to five grand. They are very expensive. I'm never going to buy one unless something crazy happens. I, and throughout the rest of the day, I don't think you even saw all of them, Dirk. I was tagged in, I think, 20 pictures of Omega Seamasters. And it was, it was, it was funny. It was funny. It was annoying for a bit, and then it got to be funny. The joke went on long enough. It got to be funny. And a lovely person uh, from, the, one of the guys from Todd Knife and Tool did message me, and they are going to send me a lengthy loner of a Seamaster. I know Dirk, you offered to as well, and I do appreciate it. Uh, this is one I do have the option of buying, but I, I won't. I'm sure I'm going to have it for like a month and it's going to hurt my soul because I can't afford to buy it. And I'm going to wind up sending it back and be even sadder than I was before. But I'll take a loaner if I had the option to buy it. But um, I think he sent it in anyway. He said he would. And then but then someone else offered to buy it because he he mess he put in my public thing that I could buy it and I was like no I can't I don't have the money and he said well I'll send it to you anyway and we'll figure something out at some point but um yeah so Slicey has the full track it's great I can tell you it does really good at cutting open those uh those little um not little those big uh, meshy things they wrap Christmas trees in and I cut some little branches off with it and stuff today. 
Um, excited to get a thirty dollars knife. I ordered my first new knife knives in months this weekend. Yeah, the Grumpy Guard. There's some cool knives. They're thirty some bucks. Definitely, you should be excited. Uh, Warney Malibu has a crisper detent than reverse Tanto quad frame. I think that's probably just a tolerance thing. It, I, I, I wouldn't say they're all probably that way. That wouldn't make much sense. Um, that's why I don't borrow nice watches. Hurts too much to give them back. Yeah, Russ Cagle, that's what I said. This one I said initially Dirk offered me, and I said no, because I told him. I said I, I, I won't. It'll, it'll hurt my soul. I, I can't. I cannot do it. And then um, uh, this guy offered it, and he said, I can keep it for a little while, and if, if you can afford it, make me an offer that's fair. And it's the Skyfall one, so that is that is kind of the one that I want. I don't like orange, but I like the orange writing on that one. So um, I don't know. It's like flat black with orange writing. We'll see. We'll see. If I get it, we'll see how I feel about it. Uh, which off-grid is that? It's the Scorpion. Um, the all-blacked-out version. And this, I asked, the, the guy who loans to me, I said, hey, do, do you, what, what am I doing with this? I've had it for quite a while, but I haven't heard back from him. It's not mine. At least I don't think it's mine. I don't think it was sent to me as, as, a, as a Prezi. I definitely got the impression that it was uh, a loaner, but... Uh, get a Speedmaster homage. I, Russ, I have some watches that probably would be considered to be that, but I really don't like homages, to be honest with you. Um, I really like that knife. Can't afford it, but I like it. I don't know which one it is. Uh, but yeah, the, the off-grid's pretty cool. It, it's, it doesn't, <laughs> like, looking at it, I, I don't, I'm not in love with the look of it. I actually like the black. I think the blacked out does look cool on this knife. Uh, but, you know, the carbon inlays aren't that great, and it just is kind of a simple sort of shape. But, man, it freaking works. It just works. It's just a really good knife. I did a full video on it and everything already a while ago. But, um, yeah, action is awesome. And I just I just really, really like it. It's, it's another knife that's better than some of its parts. I almost put it in my most surprising knives, but I think by the time I got it, everybody was already talking about how great it was, so I wasn't that surprised by it. Uh, Dirt Wolf, I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. I got a question. I've seen a couple bench made knives that mention them, but grips looks really flimsy. Are they actually flimsy or are people receiving fakes? I don't think it's fakes. There's like people complain about the bug out because you can flex it a little bit, but it ain't flimsy. It's fine. Um, and it, yeah, the, the grivery grips on the griptilian don't feel that great. They're not flimsy. They have liners inside of them. There's some Hinder X Minute Team Bowies in stock of White Mountain Knives. If you interested, you can get forty two fifty off with a discount. Yes, you can use the code SDWMK at checkout. Uh, Carl Andrews SDWMK. Uh, don't buy Benchmade on Amazon. Is there any problem with those, MJ? I'm not sure about that. I'm a bit leery of buying any expensive knives on Amazon. That new. Um, uh, Send cut is that what it is? Yeah, the new Civivi sub brand, Wii Civivi sub brand thing is only going to be available on Amazon. So though that that's different, but can't wait to see your review. The Sun cut, yes, they're on the way of, and I don't know when I will get them, but I think they shipped on Thursday, maybe Thursday or Friday. I can't remember. I called and talked to Seth. I think it was Thursday. Uh, Benchmade clothes on Amazon. Oh, I, I I did not know that. Life Center has it all murdered out in Kosi. Having a really hard time convincing myself I don't need one. Uh, yeah, this is... Uh, did I get the purple? I don't know. They're loners. I didn't ask. I didn't specify in colors. Well, they're not loners, but they're like, you know, presents. I'm going to wind up giving them away to you guys, so I didn't specify on colors. They're um, provided samples. Isn't that how we're supposed to say it? Uh, this is the in Kosi knife art version with the carbon and the small one. And I have it out because I was going to, I'm sending uh, everyday EDC carry or yep. Everyday city carry. There we go. My boy Ray from the NYC. I'm sending him uh, some stuff, sending him a hinder because he's never experienced one. And I was going to throw this in, but he's already reviewed one of these. So 
but that's why I have it in. Uh, just ordered a discontinued Benchmade 943. Cool, one of those partially serrated ones. Or did they discontinue all the 943s? I thought it was just the serrated. Uh, last month or the month before, Blade HQ was selling Spidey Chefs for 150, 160. And I was like, wow, I almost bought another one for that. Uh, the Great Wallaby. I'm thinking about buying a ProTech. I wonder how they are in the long run. Um, I've had... I haven't had any of mine very long. I really only got into Protex in the last, like, year and a half. But they're, they're I mean, they're, they seem fine. But, you know, I have a lot of knives. So they don't go through a whole lot of, uh, a whole lot of time. Uh, Saka Guaca Guaca Buffalo Flop. I don't know how to say all the rest of that. Uh, you still have any C large CRKs? Yeah, I have the large and cozy. Tanto, it's my favorite. It's probably, it's definitely my, my favorite. CRK. I'll just swap these out. Yeah, the micarta and my handle one. Oh, and hello, Freedom Van. Using your KME for the first time. Well, congratulations. Hope I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was everything you wanted it to be. Hello, Oaken. How's it going? Rennie? Oh, Prime Day, they had them up for that. And that was, that's a really screaming good deal. I, I honestly would have bought another one to get it modded. I am sending a knife off to Knife Art. to Not Knife Art, I'm sorry. Um, to an EDC gear house. Way of Knife, that's the word I was looking for, not Knife Art. Uh, to get modified. I'm going to send this off to get modified because it looks crazy enough as it is. I'm going to have them do some custom anno work on it. I'm not really sure what yet. Um I'm thinking primarily purple, obviously. I'm not going to touch the blade, but uh, primarily purple. Maybe do like a blackened tumble, like black wash looking thing on the pocket clip in the back spacer. Some kind of weathered looking purple. Something like that. But yeah, this is a Best Tech Malware knife and tool design. But yeah. Kind of looks like a Boost Mini Arrow, except for that it's way bigger. <laughs> uh, what is the Koenig Arius model that you want to get? I just want a non-flipper uh, clock fan. I'm not really too picky beyond that. I just want a non-flipper. Thing looks like it belongs on a spaceship. It does, but it's a really good knife. It's really comfortable in the hand, and the blade works great, and I love warnings. I know it's like a crazy looking thing, but man, it works really, really well. Hey, TPK, how's it going? No, I do really like this a whole lot. A purple lightning. I don't know if I want to go with the lightning. That's a bit nuts. So probably will in the end, but I kind of just want like a weathered purple and then black backspacer and black pocket clip. But I was thinking about sending off either my um, Spidey Chef or my Chavez, but uh, spoiler alert, um, there is going to be a knife sale tomorrow night. Um, but one knife that's not on it because it already sold on the on the Patreon page. It's uh, sold my Chavez already. Um, not because of the pocket clip uh, this time. Um, fine with the pocket clip. But uh, um, Tuesday night there will be the full review on it. And um, it's, uh, it's not positive, I will say. I, I found some stuff with it that I really don't like. And it had nothing to do with the pocket clip this time. Um, I think I should have gotten... A newer version of the same one that I already had instead of getting the Liberation. I don't like the Liberation. Um, you'll, you'll find out why in the video. I, I was okay with it, like in the unboxing, but the more I carried it, it became annoying. Let's wait see the action on the Nkosi. It's, you know, pretty standard, uh, pretty standard CRK. This is pretty well broken in, but... Need to look the liberation up, uh, BRB. I, well, I'll just tell you, spoiler, what it is. Um, the It's horribly uncomfortable in the pocket. It has so many sharp edges. Uh, getting your hand past it, including the blade coming way too close to the edge of the handles. It's in a box, or I would bring it out and show you. But um, I think I did show it on the last live. I had to file it down a little bit um, because it was really definitely going to cut me. And then just all the corners of the handle are all very, very sharp. And not where they're going to cut you or anything, but it's really, 
really uncomfortable to reach in and out of your pocket. It's very, very uncomfortable. Um, and I just did not enjoy carrying it. I, I just thought I wouldn't, I'm only carrying this because I feel like I have to, and that's not going to make me keep it around. I may get another Chavez, though. I may go back to the old 229 Rendencion like I used to have, but... Is it poorly contoured? Is it design flaw? It's just poorly con There's not contour. The edges are just... The corners are just corners. And I don't remember my old 229 being like that. I really don't. I think it's just a liberation thing. Um, I don't remember my old 229 being uncomfortable in my pocket at all. But this one is just, yeah don't like um moving my hand in out of my pocket when it was in there uh just ordered the new workshop uh, workshop i needed it good joshua this, it's a great system i really do like it uh since this is bruising blades how do you like the 90 minute ipa i prefer the 60 minute ipa i like the 90 the best um the 60 is all right and then the 120 is is just really it's just booze um which is it tastes good but it's just booze but i like the 90 i think it's the happy the happy spot any opinions on the Wingman EDC Tom Mayo MTM mock front flipper? Not quite sure what that is off the top of my head, so I'm going to say no. Oh, yeah, I've seen it. No, I have not handled one, though. Uh, what, is, what is Keith going on about? I missed something. Warranty voided for flipping it open. Nah, that's, that's fine. Uh, watch my review. It's awesome. I'm sure it, I've heard good things about it. I think I know what it is now, but yeah. Two two eights and two two nines. I've had and probably seem to have those issues. They were full titanium. Also, not sure if it makes a difference or not. Mine was titanium and carbon, and it was. Yeah, it was just, just just sharp. I don't know why you got to do that. Just round the corners off a little bit. But I don't remember the old one bothering me. Doesn't mean that it didn't have it. Maybe just the angle it was, it didn't hit and it didn't bother me. But this one was like, I usually keep my vape in my pocket that my knife is in. And it's just reaching in and out of my pocket a lot. And it's just like, God, ow. Everyday minimalist, is the Encosi large worth the money? I think so. I think so. I don't know what you're posting, Great Well, you, everything you post says message retracted. There's been, like, a whole bunch of them. Uh, what's your thoughts on Concept Knives? I just did one in the Rapid Fire Reviews. I like a lot of them. Uh, I think it's going to take them a hot minute to find their design language, but I think they're getting there. And uh, the new Gremlin's really, really cool. I like that a lot. i um, been trying to hunt one down. Yeah, I like the Tanto the best. If you're Show me the Sabenza. The only um, Sabenza I have is the small one. I'm going to switch some knives out here. I'll bring the suspense out as well, but I'm going to put some stuff away and switch some stuff out. I have some stuff on deck, so to speak. The Wii Gava, which this is going to be in my most carried knives this month. Um, oh, you meant the, the Inkosi? I already, I already showed it like a couple times. Um, put this out. I don't feel bad putting it out now. I don't feel bad putting the waypoint out because you guys can actually get them now. Actually, the Malibu is the one you can't can't get at the moment. Um, and what else we got here on deck, so to speak? Yeah, we were talking about it. Oh, other stuff that got sold and my that if you were not a member of the Patreon, you don't see the early access Patreon sales. Um, another one I think you guys will be unsurprised by. Uh, the Swayback's gone. Um, yeah, I done. Tried to love it. I still love the blade on it. The rest of it's just kind of meh. So uh, that's gone. Um, any thoughts on Wii's new budget brand? We were just talking about it. I have some on the way. I will let you know when I get them. It's just too goofy. Yeah, I don't know if I, does the word, I would use the word goofy, but it's too something. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's just too something. Uh... Uh, oh, woman knife you, how you doing? Uh, how's G10 composite grips from Benchmade or your process? The G10 from Benchmade is really nice. They just charge a lot of money for it. 
Wait, we use a new budget barrel hemp assist VV. There's one below it. It's called Sencut. It's only going to be available on Amazon. Or direct from the Sencut website. It's one or the other. It's not going to be in dealers. It's all like, uh, everything's like sub 40 bucks. Got a waypoint on order. Yeah, I'm so glad they came back out again so that I can show mine more. <laughs> so that you guys won't... You guys would get really mad when I would show this because you can't get one. Like Tangram and like them, they will probably fail. No, Grass Tangram did not fail because of Tangram. Tangram failed because the guy who was the, the proponent and creator of the Tangram line left the company. That's why Tangram failed. It was nothing to do with the knives or anything. And also, I hope that Civivi, or that Sencut, whatever, Civivi's sub-brand, Wii's sub-brand, whatever, the thing I'm concerned about, and I brought this up to them the other day, is when Tangram was being sold um, on Amazon exclusively in New York and California, you couldn't buy them. They said they were illegal when they absolutely were not. So if when I was in New York, if I tried to buy a Tangram off of Amazon, Amazon would say, I'm not shipping this because it's illegal. It can order it straight from the website. It's not only on Amazon, uh, Buffalo Flop. It's, it's, you can order it straight from the website. But um, yeah, it's, so Sencut did think of that because I brought it up to them and they said, no, we thought of that. That's why they're available on the website as well because they knew that people had problems with that with Tangram. So um, yeah, it was so dumb. Anything that says that would say flipper in it in the description or in the title, you couldn't buy in New York. There's nothing illegal about that in New York at all. In any any area of New York, even the city. In the city, they'll arrest you for anything. But by the word of law, it's not illegal. So And then I heard someone say California had the same problem, but I'm not don't quote me on that. How's it spelled? Sun cut? Yeah, I think it's spelled like that, Jesse. Did you get your knife, by the way, Jesse? I got... I thought I saw that somebody got... One of the two guys who won a knife got one. Oh, maybe it was the Hinder they got it. Or was it you? Comment down below. Because I, I, I got notified that a knife... That something was delivered. And I looked and I realized it wasn't me. It was the... The winner... So Senka, no, it looks like they're still going to have 9CR, but uh, maybe, uh, um, oh, you did get it. Cool, Jesse. How do you like it? I'm going to bring it out in honor. I'm going to bring mine out in honor of you because you got your cool knife. As this, as this show goes on, the lineup of knives gets more and more expensive every time. I try and start out with some more affordable stuff. It never works out. Uh, Glamis to Civivi then. It's still the same. Civivi's going to be more expensive. These are all like sub $40. In many ways, I prefer to have 9CR than D2. I, in almost all the ways, prefer to have 9CR over D2. <laughs> Q1 fan. It's just, I like it a lot more. Um, oh, one is 9CR, there's D2. Yeah, the first two, one's 9CR, one's D2. Throw the Dalek in there. I don't think I have the Dalek within reach. No, I don't. It's on the other side of the room. Civivi will keep carrying the $50 plus knives. Yeah, Civivis you'll be able to get from dealers and stuff like that. Sign cuts are just only from Amazon and or, or direct. This means the video is a bit blurry. It's probably just a connection. It'll clear up if you go back and watch it later. It looks clear on my screen. Um, afraid to use for food prep as D2, 9CR just seems far less risky. Literal trance says, yeah, there's that. Hydrate, thank you. Uh, yeah, Dirt Wolf, I don't think, I don't think, I'm agree with Zach, I don't think, uh, I've seen a whole lot of grips, griptilians with a whole lot of miles on them and they're not falling off. You gotta be careful with Amazon reviews, sometimes somebody just has a bone to pick and they keep posting the same crap over and over again in multiple names. Oh yeah, Jerry Russell. Thank you for bringing that up. I did. I did hear about that today. Um, yeah, Tony Bowes passed away. Old school traditional guy. Um, very, very sad. Um, 
I did get to meet him. Uh, ironically enough, of all people, it was Swags who introduced me to him um, when she was with Southern Edge Knife or Southern Edge. She was Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Um, we were outside um, indulging our habits at the same time, which you know, nicotine, nothing exciting. Uh, but um, she was sitting there, she was standing there talking to this older guy, and I walked up and said hello, and she said it was Tony Bowes. I never, didn't even know what he looked like. And, um, seemed like a really nice guy. I only talked to him for like, you know, five minutes, but, uh, seemed like a really nice guy. Honored to have met him. I know what he's done for the knife community. Um, seemed like a pretty amazing dude. Uh, Jesse Bergen, I love the Harsey. Tempted to open it up. Uh, does it go back together pretty easy? Yeah, it's not too bad at all. Um, I try to let it break in, but I do admit this one I, I, I did. My, my full size, I did what I was told, and I just let it break in. Uh, but people who know more than me say, let them break in. Uh, but this one, I did, I did take it apart and polish the washers and stuff because I got impatient. But um, Oh, I got you were laughing at, uh, little trans. When I say I was outside with swags indulging our habits, that can be read a lot of ways. I felt like I needed to specify that. Nothing's happening to Civivi. They came out with another um, lower end line that's send cut that's just going to be on Amazon and their site. But it's all like $40 and under stuff. Very, 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 very budgety stuff. I hate letting things break in before I tear it apart. Me too, Grumpy Grunt. I can't do it. I can't do it. American Blade Works is the devil to take apart and reassemble. John, I, my old, my V4, I took apart. And yeah, I guess I do remember it being a bit sweary. I don't think it was crazy, but it was just a bit sweary. What's the ridge near the thumb studs on the Ankosi? What, this thing? It's just, I don't know, it's just always been there on Ankosis. I don't know what it's really for. It's just always been there. Budget brain has a budget brain. Yeah, when you've, when you've got companies, you know, like Ganzo and Tucson and stuff undercutting you, you got to do something. Uh, Freedom Van, is the AD15 a pain to take down? Yes. It's it's just it's just confusing. Um, I got it back together okay, but yeah, it's confusing. I have not taken apart my quote-unquote real one. I just took apart the cold steel version. I have not disassembled my um, my actual Demco yet. Uh, good time to ask, did you always like Tantors that grow on me? Uh, the Great Wallaby. They, they've definitely grown on me. was not a Tanto guy at the beginning, but now I am. And oh, by the way, you guys were awesome. I really did. I got great, great responses to that video I did to pick my jacket knife. And speaking of Tantos, uh, I think you guys knew what was going to win. It was pretty clear if you look at the comments. Yes, this is the knife that is going to reside in my jacket for the winter. It's a Cool Steel Recon 1 Tanto. So, yeah, this is a fun video. I like doing silly stuff like that. And either tonight or tomorrow morning at the latest, probably tonight, I'm going to put up to get your suggestions on um, best best EDC knife under 50 bucks. That seems to be the next one that everybody wants to see. So that'll go up tonight or tomorrow. And, yeah, we can't you can't do polls anymore. So it's, But I don't want to do a poll anyway because I don't want to pick – like five i want you guys to suggest just whatever um except for if you're voting for a ganzo you're wasting your vote <laughs> but other than that um yeah just pick what your best your best budget knife under 50 bucks and just comment and i'll keep an eye on the comments and i'll do my best to add them up it's all pretty unscientific but um no metal complex demco mg 8020 i don't have it out at the moment i do have an 8020 as usual, yeah, he got a cooler 8020 than mine. I will admit that, but I have two Demcos, and he only has one. Yes, it's a survey, not a poll. Exactly, John. Thank you. Um, Renny, there is a pivot tool on Etsy that uh, Rust Bucket Goods makes a breeze. I still have that, Zach, and I still haven't used it. I feel so bad. I gotta, I gotta get that done and do a video on it. Thank you for reminding me. I just haven't had to had to take a bench made apart recently, so. 
Is stone wash finish on a blade that much more durable? It's not that it's more durable, Big Heart. It's just that it doesn't show the scratches as much. I like the working finish like that's on this because like it, it's it kind of is already scratched up, so you just don't you just don't notice the scratches very much. Since Zach's here, I'm gonna bring out my I'm gonna bring out another Benchmade because um, I have been loving it. I have too much stuff in front of this drawer. And bring out my uh, my custom bug out because I do love it so. This this knife this is the M4 with the purple thumb studs and the purple standoffs standoffs and the uh, gray G10. Um, if I was not a knife reviewer, I would I'd be having a really hard time carrying anything else other than that. It's just fan freaking. Fantastic. Uh, somebody said, uh, how's the action on the Gava? It's really good. It makes a really great sound, too. Mm. This one was a pain to take apart as well, I will say. We're, so we've been talking about knives that are a pain to take apart. It doesn't look like it would be, but I don't remember exactly what it was, but I remember it being kind of sweary. Because it's got the screw going through to the... Oh, yeah, you have kind of flip-flop it, because the this body screw is also the pocket clip screw. And then you also have to remove this one. So you kind of have to flip flop it. And it's, it was kind of annoying. Oh, you just got an 87 Bally. Congratulations. They're kind of cool. Trying very hard not to lose your fingers. We'll keep trying, Snuggle Tummy. I never, like, I never cut myself bad on a battle song. I've got a little, a couple of nicks here. I've actually been knock on something. Don't usually get cut with them. I think it's because I'm paranoid. So I start off assuming I'm going to get cut and being very paranoid. And I don't do anything like throw them around or stuff like a lot of people do. John Cottrell says, I've used the Axis Lock since the first McHenry and Williams and never had a broken Omega Spring. I can say, John, I've also never had a broken Omega Spring. And I've had lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of benchmates. But I do accept the fact that they do break sometimes. But I think it is very overblown. It's behind the edge in the waypoint grass. I don't remember off the top of my head. I don't remember every little stat. But, um, yeah, it was very it's thin. It's mid to high double digits. It's like between 14 and 17 thousandths or something like that. It's, it's very slicey. Um... Hello, Jesse. And yeah, the super chat is open down below if you guys want to kick in a few shekels or click the join button. Get access to the, the cool little shield things next to your name. Uh, duh. We're talking about cutting ourselves. Hey, Brian Stone, how's it going? Yeah, I think some people just break them and some people don't. It seems like the people who break one Omega Spring break a ton of them. And those of us that don't, just don't. Uh, one of my Discord buzz has a fixie with eight thousandths of an inch behind the edge. Yeah, I've seen some that are that are down that, that thin. Yeah, Stonewash, Stonewash, Waypoint sold out quickly. Yeah, that's their most popular one, I think. Um, I, I like the, I like this one. This is the Satin Stonewash. That's what I wanted, and that's what I got. Are my comments showing up? Yes, Monster Racing, they are. I mean, wait, no, I don't know. No, man, I got heartburn again. What is it with you guys? Every time I get on the show at night, I have heartburn. Oh, it's probably just because I ate my body weight and chicken curry right before the show. That's probably what happened there. I guess it's not much of a mystery after all. I have a satin bead blast one. Oh, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen the one of those in uh, in person. I get Chinese curry, so it's not quite the same. But it was really good. No, not homemade. We we ordered Chinese last night and um. I always order an extra meal when I get 
Chinese. So there are no sounds the website coming along. It's coming. I thought it was pretty much done, and now I'm having a huge problem with the ad displays. So um, thank you very much, Swami. I do appreciate it. And yeah, click the upvote. There's 133 of you on here. Only 55 likes. Uh, shekels. Yeah, I, it's a shout out to a one of my comedy heroes and kind of a friend. Not really a friend of mine. A guy I know. A guy who answers my texts. I guess. Uh, Mark Marin. He does it in his um his uh podcast it sounded like i don't get along i get along great with mark he's just he's just really famous and I, I i wouldn't i wouldn't go as far as to presume to call him my friend but uh yeah we we talk a little bit and when he's around here i i open for him um but who knows when that's ever gonna happen again uh what do you think about the new budget we line we've been talking about that a lot previously twirling so i don't really want to rehash it again you can go back and, and watch it when it's over with uh Marin is funny as fuck. Yes. Oh, I said the word. <sighs> Darn it. You said AF. You tried, and I, I just wouldn't said it. Oh well. Um. Yeah. He, he is a very funny man. Very, very funny man. Um. What's on the wrist today? Uh. Citizen Promaster. Ever met any of the tenderloins? I don't know who you're talking about, so I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. No swears. Oh no. Yeah. Uh, the Pro Master is a cool watch for sure. Yeah, but, you know, I had my son all talked. Oh, the Impractical Jokers guys. Yeah, I know them. I didn't know their last name. I didn't know their... I've met them. They're, I Obviously, not enough to remember what their last names are, but I I know them. I've worked with them. I opened for them a couple times. Um, yeah, it seemed like good guys. Uh, yeah, the, I almost got my son convinced to get one of these. I loaned him this one, and he really liked it. And he likes the dive tank. And then... I foolishly let him borrow my marathon and which is more expensive and he likes that better. So that's what he's getting for Christmas instead of the citizen. Cost me $70 to loan him my marathon because he likes it so much better. Uh, best dark joke, Evan B123. It is really long and it doesn't work to deliver it like this. Um, <clears throat> I do like dark jokes, though. I've been trying to resist getting into watches. My wallet can only take so much of a whopping. Yeah, don't get into watches. I'm I'm a good boy, though. I don't spend that much on watches. The most expensive one I have is was $400 when it was new, and um, I didn't pay anywhere near that much for it used. And then, uh, well, I guess no, I do have a tag that was $1,000 new, but somebody gave that to me, and it's really old. It's probably really only a $200 watch now. Do not get into watches, yes. And do not count your knives. That's my supplement to that. I don't even know what date is anymore. Time has never been more ephemeral. It is true. That is very true. Uh, most races, hard to be a comedian. I give you a lot of credit. It's hard in front of a crowd. It, it is for a while, and then it's just not. It, which I think most comedians would say that. It's, um... It is hard for a bit, and then then it's just like... I always say that um, when I'm on stage is the only time I'm truly calm. Um, I When you're on stage, all you can think about is the next joke or what that guy's doing over in the corner, and I'm not thinking about anything else to do with my life, and it's just that half an hour to an hour is just meditation for me. I... I love being on stage now. It's uh, that's I miss it so much. I'm gonna have to start doing drugs or something. Uh, Slicey, so can I personally pay you to get a Sharks Brock, Brock Lesnar and loose bearings mug, Derek Nelson? I I whenever I get around to start making stuff, I guess I could throw one up on the uh, what's that thing I have down below that nobody ever buys anything from? It's probably on here. Yeah, that little merchandise thing. I'll do that. I'll design one of those this week. If not, if I don't do it in the next couple of days, Derek Nelson, email me and remind me to do it. I can do that on Teespring, I think it is. 
Yeah, on Teespring. I'll, I'll add one to Teespring. Um, you try a Southern, Southern Knives Tolkien? I have not. Don't usually do much with custom East kind of stuff. What knife is on the far left? This is the 3.25 inch version of the Spartan Knives Harsey folder. Uh, what did everyone think of Pete's, Cedric and Ada's ladder anxiety video? John Cotra, I sympathized. I am also terrified of heights, and um, I totally, totally sympathize with him. Uh, everyone needs a merch table. Yeah, I will add the Brock Lesnar and Loose Bearings one. Sharks, Brock Lesnar, and Loose Bearings. Yeah, you should go watch it. It's, it's very funny. I, I would watch. I would watch Pete do just about anything, a, a, you know, within the realms of good taste. <laughs> but uh, I love the guy. We're really good friends, and I just he makes me laugh so much. I actually watched it last night, and I was laughing hysterically. Love that Benchmade, but damn, they're proud of their product. Yeah, uh, I don't think I don't think this for two fifty is too insane with M four and everything, and it's all custom built. But yeah, some of their stuff's a bit a bit nuts. John Control Pete needed some Xanax, dude. I'm the exact same way though. I, when I get up on ladders, I can't stand it, and everybody it it makes me so angry when I will tell people I'm afraid of heights, and they're like, "Yeah, but you used to be a pilot." I'm like, "Yeah, but it's different." Being in a plane is totally different than standing on a ladder or being at the edge of a bridge or the edge of a cliff. Freaks me out. Oh, uh, we need a custom bug out or a Spidey Chef. Um, you know what? I, I, probably the Spidey Chef at the end of the day, but I do really love this a whole lot. It would be really close. Uh, Renny says, if you had to cut up Thanksgiving turkey, one of these knives. If it was one of these knives sitting here, it would be quiet carry because it's Vanex and it's completely rust proof. Uh, EDC202 says, used to be a pilot. Yeah, I was. Uh, my dad was a flight instructor. I actually had a pilot's license before I had a driver's license by two weeks. Um, but uh, haven't flown legally <laughs> since I was... 22 um i just my medical expired and i never got it back and um once i had to start paying to fly because my dad owned a plane he sold the plane when i was 22 and once i had to start paying for it i can't afford it even i can't afford to even just go rent a plane to go fly so i uh let it expire and haven't haven't flown legally since i was 22 i've flown illegally several times since then just from buddies who have airplanes that let me let me go up with them and they let me fly but god it's probably even been a decade since i did that it was oh longer than that yeah 50 was, i was in germany the last time i flew uh kenneth that's the Encosi. oh sorry i missed that one yeah the Encosi. a half track for me turkey will be unrecognizable when i'm done <laughs> yeah grumpy run that's it's not a really good one uh hello legally what are you smuggling skahas over the border no i just i don't have a license anymore so I, i'm flying I, when i do when when my friends let me fly their planes i am not technically licensed to do so but everybody does that in airplanes i've i've let so many people in the sit in the right seat say hey you want to take the controls for a minute here's a little secret about flying airplanes uh pilots all act like they're they're you know hot shit uh it's really easy. Flying airplanes is is really easy. No, it, it's not hard. It, the navigation, the communication, that stuff is a bit complicated, but the actual operation of the plane is not difficult. Flying is easy. Landing is hard. No, Landing is not even that bad either once you get used to it. See you, Zach. Oh, OCD for EC is having a trivia night tonight, huh? Oh, that's interesting. Let's take that up with Molly. Taking my gimmick. I do the trivia nights around here. This, this is fake anger. Um, the automatic pilot in the airplane movie was classic. Yeah, it, it is kind of like that. You take off, you get up to altitude, you do the thing, and 
and then you get close to where you're going and then you land it. I always describe it as when you're driving a car, there are thousands of things to hit. When you're flying an airplane, there is one really, really big thing that you can hit. And just don't, just don't hit that thing. And it's all fine. What was that in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Like there was uh, someone they encountered who could fly. And he was trying to teach them how to fly, like as a person, like not to fly a plane, like they were, it was a person that could just fly by themselves. And they said, uh, uh, flying is easy. You just have to throw yourself at the ground and miss. <laughs> I loved that. Just throw yourself at the ground and miss. Fly a plane's easy. Any of you guys, if, if you can drive a car, I can teach you how to fly a small plane and two hours. It's not hard. It's hard to be really great at it, but... I'm trying to find something else to grab out for you guys. Ow, Jesus! Somebody mentioned this, so we'll bring this out. Yes, we did. I Actually, yeah, check my Instagram after this. I'll post pictures of our completed Christmas tree. So, yeah, we're a little early. Not too bad. Just a few days early. But, the uh, yeah, I don't know if the kiddos going to be around this weekend. So, I wanted to get it done. How about helicopters? Hard to fly. Helicopters are ridiculous. I do not understand them in any way whatsoever. I've never flown a helicopter. I do not ever want to try. I've watched it enough that... Also, they scare me. Because heli... They don't scare me, but... Helicopters, like, if the engine quits, they just fall out the sky. Or an uh, airplane, if the engine quits, you, you got a minute. Uh, Slacy, total change of pace. Best book you've read recently. Derek Nelson, I'm really... In, I listen to mostly audiobooks, I will confess. But, um, because I drive sometimes and, like, I just, I just like having audiobooks on in the background while I'm working. So uh, I would say uh, there's a whole series of them on Audible called the Bobaverse. They're fantastic. Sci-fi thing. It's fantastic. Just look up the Bobaverse um, books. They are amazing. Yes, Sean Bryan, a little bit safer, but you're completely out of control. Where I like having a bit more control. But paramotors. I'd probably try one of those. I've flown ultralights a lot. Ever been up in a hot air balloon slice? Yes, I have. The only form of flying conveyance I have not ever been up in is a blimp. And I, I need to knock that one off the bucket list. But no, I've never been up in a blimp. But I've been up in hot air balloons, ultralights, um, sailplanes, uh, hang gliders. Oh, and paraglider, I guess. My point. I've never been up in one of those. But um, yeah. was in a Navy helicopter that was leaking hydraulic fluid, was told, don't worry until it stops leaking. Tom could just come to, you know, it's funny. I was in a helicopter once in some third world country, and <clears throat> there was a, a puddle of, like, red fluid on the floor, and I asked the guy, who I guess is the equivalent, like the crew master or whatever, I said, is, is that blood? And he said, no, 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 he's, don't worry, it's hydraulic fluid. I was like, I would rather it was blood than hydraulic fluid. The helicopter doesn't run on blood. But, uh, we lived, but, yeah, I took a, I took the convoy back. I didn't, I didn't get back in the helicopter. <laughs> I was given the option and I said no. <laughs> helicopter blood, yeah, that's what it was. No, 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 it's hydraulic fluid. Yeah, I much prefer airplanes, though. So what's everybody carrying today? We're almost wrapping up here, but... Uh, sounds like the old Land Rover Discovery model. If there's no oil under it, there's no oil in it. That's a good one, no mojo. I never heard that one before. I really like that. How thick would you say is too thick behind the edge? Yeah, somewhere in the upper 20s, probably. Uh, loved your Weeha bottle opener. Yeah, they sent it with a... I got a bunch of tools from them a while ago, and it was just in there. It's pretty cool. DLT Smock, Kaiser Sea line 8015, very nice. Um, MKM Azonzo, the little guy, uh, Para 3, ABW Model 1, 
Kite fin, that's a really nice one. XM18, three inch, totally customized, as one should do. I prefer big old trucks, the kind, you know, the kind of bread trucks. Yeah, you do drive a uh, bread truck every day, pretty much. Orange 8020, any 8020 is a good one. Concept Warrior, that's a nice one. Hinder Slip Joint, those are pretty cool. Shiro N95 uh, NL, flexing on the nation, KF Boston. Uh, I forgot the name of that lady that patinas knives with her endowment. Well, she's on here, so she could, it's TPK is the short for it. She was on here earlier, anyway. CVV Ortis, very good knife. Open L number eight, going classic. It's always good. S35 Elementum. Uh, CG, I corrected it for you, Buffalo Flop. I, I gathered it. <laughs> I gathered I speak typo. Lots of VVs in here, as always, which is not a bad thing. S35 Penguin. There's always a lot of Penguin evangelists in here, too. It's better to go Capara. It's a, I, 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 I had mine out again. The other one, go, hey, hey, hey. I had mine out again uh, the other day. Hadn't carried it in a long time. Benchmade CF Elite Presidio 2 and GEC 44 Gunstock. You know, it's, it's funny you brought up GECs, Scott Simmons. I get asked all the time why I don't review more GECs. I really tried again. <laughs> this last month they've released, this last like month and a half, they've released two ones that I really, really want. Because there's no way I'm ever going to get one. They're gone in like three and a half minutes. And I'm not paying that much on the secondary. I would love to review more GECs, but I'm not reviewing something that nobody that's all long gone. And I can't ever get one. So I just, I'm done. I tried, guys, I tried. I'll buy cases like a simp. And I'll be happy with them. Loom 940, that's good. Yeah, the beer and saucers, and there was another recent one, too, that was just, like, last week that was, like, gone in three and a half minutes. I was like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I really wanted that beer and sausage one. I'd actually use it. I like sausage. See you later, Jesse. Yeah, exactly, Dustin. They are, GECs are insane. <coughs> I've just completely given up. I have no connections to get one. I probably could. I bet if I called Collector Knives, they'd make sure I got one. But I don't, I'm so annoyed that I just don't, I just don't care that much. Actually, Collector Knives probably wouldn't. They're like the most scrupulous company in the world. They'd probably tell me to go climb a rope. But um, yeah, it, I'm sure somewhere I could get a GEC held for me or something, but I just don't. I have no desire to put them on the channel because you just can't get them. Rennie, I have like 12 GECs, but lately I've almost forgot about the company. I'm like, you, yeah, I'm sick of them selling out so fast. Yeah, it's not even that they sell out fast, I get. It's, there's nothing they can do about it. I don't think there's anything that's like their fault. But I, maybe it is, it does, no, I'm not going to say, I'm going to, I'm not, I'm going to hedge that. I, it does feel like it's engineered a little bit now. But the secondary prices are so insane on those things. Blacked out Xerx, very nice knife. Why well, on GEC so bad I almost paid $200 on eBay for it. Yeah, that's, that's just it, Jeremy Russell. That's the, the secondaries in them are nuts. It does kind of feel a bit engineered now, though, like... They've been doing this long enough that, God, I would think they could pump out more if they wanted to, but I don't know. I've had a couple. I've had a couple of owners, and I really, I actually didn't, I'm sorry, I did own one. I did buy one from somebody once, I, a good friend of mine who didn't gouge me. I had a 38, maybe? I can't remember what it was. No, it was a Barlow, some kind of Barlow. It wasn't a 38. Those are slimmer. It was a Barlow of some kind. And, um... Yeah, I had it for a, quite a while. I sold it to a good friend for a very good price, but um, it's just, yeah, it's, it's just, there. it's a really nice traditional, but it's just a really nice traditional, and I'm not super into those. 
twirling you'll ever think you think you'll ever get a kimi you know, I'm, I'm sure i'll get a kimi at some point uh jimmy russell they can't make more than they do they only have less than 30 people that work at the factory and they still use old mostly old school equipment i uh, jeremy f uh, okay okay but after a while <laughs> That excuse doesn't fly anymore. When you're not making any effort to expand and everything you everything you make sells out immediately, at some point, come on. Like TRM, I stick up for them because I know behind the scenes how much money they're spending on equipment trying to expand their company to make more stuff because, because they sell everything out so fast. I don't know. G-Man says they're really small runs and the machines they use are old. Yeah, but did they make modern machines that'll do the same exact thing? I, I get you want to use the old school equipment and blah, 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 but you could you could make... You, you can get modern equipment that's going to act just like the old ones. It'll be fine. I don't know. I just don't... I think that excuse works for a few years, and I don't think it, it works after a while. I think after a while it's just... Okay. It doesn't make... It wouldn't make sense that they would limit so the secondary market... There's, I don't, I'm not saying that, Rob. I'm just saying it's just uh, at some point you just... You, you know you have a product everybody wants. It's just... Ramp it up. I think they do it to... I think they do it to keep the hype, and it is kind of cool. It, it not, not not saying I wouldn't do the same thing, but it's just, you know, if I'm selling something and I know that it sells out in 30 seconds, maybe, maybe they just think it's cool. I don't know, but I feel like uh, after after this many years, they, they could have done something to make a few more. Um, Twirling says, I like my egg scramble. That's very random, but so do I. Uh, this is the Rolex marketing model, artificial scarcity. Rolex, some Rolex, but but that's just it, Mark. Some, or I'm sorry, Freedom Van. I transfix names here. Some of them, some Rolexes are still readily available. I'm not saying that, that GEC shouldn't still do those really limited runs. They should definitely still keep doing that. But make two or three models that human beings can actually buy. That's that's what I'm saying. And Rolex does that. It's going to cost you a lot, but if you want to go buy a Rolex Explorer right now, like you can. If you want to go buy a Rolex Submariner right now, you can. It might not be the exact one that you want. Trolling says, I like my steaks medium well. I'm a medium guy, so we're not exactly the same there. Uh... GEC does have about 12 dealers. Yeah, and they all sell out in three minutes. <laughs> Probably with ketchup. No, no ketchup. I hate ketchup. Ketchup is the condiment of Satan. No love for over easy. Nope, I only like my eggs scrambled. That's pretty much it. Or omelets, which are basically scrambled eggs folded in half. Thoughts on the canis? Best thing Spyderco made this year. Um, probably going to remain so till the end of the year. Although I do have a pre-order for that Maximet Sage... Two? Is it Sage 2 or Sage 3? That's the Maximet one. But that's not going to be eligible for the next year because it's just Maximet of one they already made before. Um, they still making the Sky? Yeah, they actually just updated it. I just saw that on their, their Instagram, I think, or somewhere. Uh, no more with the, the wavy blade. It's going to be a regular, regular grind on the blade. Sage 1. Yeah, that's what it is. NAF sergeant. Mm. I like the lines in the blade of the sky. So did I, Dustin. I was kind of disappointed with it, but I, I like the little wavy lines. I thought it was cool, but they got rid of it. Oh, that's a terrible idea. That grind is what made Skaha popular. I agree, Buffalo Flop, but we, we will see. I would argue that possibly also the action made them popular.
and, and how the rock jumper is holding up. Um, I still have it. I haven't carried it a whole lot. It's actually going to be in the sale tomorrow night. I, I like it. it. It's my favorite of the, you know, FRN fancy plastic VG10 Spider Coast, but not enough for me to uh, keep it long term. No, I'm sorry. It's not my favorite. The Dragonfly Morty is my favorite, but been on the Skaha wait list forever. Yeah, I had one and then I sold it and then my number came up. Actually, the same week I bought the used one. And I let someone else have my number. Half track or XM18 3.5? XM18 3.5, the half track's a little small. I mean, it's not, it's fine for my hands, but if, yeah, if I could have only one, XM18 3.5. XM18 3 inch versus half track, I would say half track. <laughs> Hashtag eating good. Hey, Ronnie, how's it going? Are you the Ronnie? Are you the Ronnie? The infamous Ronnie who gets fired five times a week? If you are, welcome. And I enjoyed hanging out with you at Blade Show. If you're not, that's a really odd thing for me to have said. No, oh, you're not that Ronnie. Uh, you're just some other Ronnie. What's your favorite OTF not worth a zillion dollars? Oh, definitely. It's, I don't think it's a zillion. But yeah, my favorite OTF is the, the Recon 035. I do like it very, very much. Guardian Tactical Recon 035 is definitely my favorite OTF. That's an easy question to answer. I like my Microtex too, but the action on this thing is just so good. Sale again tomorrow night. No love for second shift workers. I had, my last sale was a weekend sale, but um, I have other commitments I had to do this weekend, so I could not do that. So I had other videos I had to get out the last few days. So uh, Jeremy Russell says, my Recon 035 wasn't good enough for you, though. No, because you rode that hard and put it away wet, and I need something to be pretty on camera. And this one has carbon fiber. It's all about the prettiness. Hey, you got me to get another one. I still enjoyed it enough to buy another one. And it had a coated blade. Uh, that one you took off the table sparks my interest. I don't know which one I just took off the table. The Gava? Oh, yeah. It's a very, very good one. I've very much been just the Wee Knives Gava. Regular Ultratechs are reasonably priced. They are. I think, I think a lot of them aren't that... Um, uh, that um, expensive, especially the Microtex aren't, and these are a lot of them aren't that expensive. They're just hard to get, so people just artificially think in their head that they're they're very expensive, and they're not. <laughs> Craig Slist, I like that name. Loving my SHF thirty three point two five. Yeah, it's a really nice knife. Very very much like it as well. Everyone thinks OTFs are like they are in the movie. Movie knives are definitely not stock. No, they're not. I think one thing that people don't realize that OTFs do, it's double action OTFs, are if you... Everybody thinks you can just flick them out and stab shit. No, they just do that. They, it knocks them off the tracks. And then you have to put it back on the track. It, you... If you stab this into your hand, it's going to poke you a tiny little bit. It might draw a drop of blood, and that's it. I think people think you could, like, put it up against the back of somebody's head and fire it and stab them in the head. Uh, I'm watching. I'm, I'm ahead of you, so I'm watching my uh, own OTF demonstration. That was pretty good. You cussed again. I know. Once the dam is broken, I, then it's it's broken. Uh, have you ever gotten a hair whittling edge? You are a slicey dicey after all. Yes, I have. I, I don't have the patience to put that insane, crazy edges on all my knives. I, I, It's like something when I'm really bored or stressed out. I find it meditative to really put a really crazy screaming edge on a knife. But usually I just put a good working edge on stuff and...
Thank you, Mark Herrera. You as well. Wishing us all a happy Thanksgiving week. I'm going to ban Slicey Dicey. No, you won't, you coward. I don't think you can, anyway. I uh, just bought a Hogue Deco Warncliffe for 90 bucks. Good deal. Torling sharpening is my kink. Okay, thank you for sharing. <laughs> Uh, Microtech doesn't let you touch a knife without avoiding the warranty. I've heard that, but I, I don't know. I don't care. I am the warranty. Um, but I think I'm going to wrap this up a little bit early tonight because I know the OCD for EDC is doing a thing. So, um, yeah, that was pretty edgy. I see what you did there. Huh? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah? No? Um, yeah, I'm going to wrap this up. So thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out. I will see you all next week, which we will probably all still be recovering from turkey comas. If all goes according to plan, stay safe, all that crap. Wash your hands, wear a mask, have a good one.